the absolute most painful thing that I've ever experienced in my life was a kidney stone. So this is a while ago before I had any awareness about health or diet. So one night in the middle of the night, I think about three o'clock in the morning, I was rudely awakened by the most severe pain I've ever experienced deep inside my body. So I got up, went to the bathroom and just laid on the floor for about 30 minutes trying to get relief. This pain was visceral pain. Now, visceral pain is some internal pain that you can't really tell where it's coming from exactly. It's very vague, but it was extremely severe. I was nauseous. I felt like vomiting. I didn't know what the heck was going on, but it was felt like something inside my body was like in a vice grip and there was tremendous pressure and internal back pain that I just could not relieve no matter what position I got in. It would kind of come in waves. It would kind of feel better and then worse. And I just wanted to sleep because I was so exhausted and I didn't want to take any medication initially, at least until later. I'm like, give me the morphine. And I didn't want to wake up my wife, but it just got to the point where I had to figure this out to see what the heck was going on. So I woke up Karen. I said, honey, could you just take me to the hospital right now? She says, can't you just wait till the morning? I'm so tired. I said, no, we need to go right now. I am dying. And so she drove me to the hospital. And I will say, there's nothing like kidney stone pain that causes you to lose your sense of humor real fast. Now, the pain from kidney stone um, can happen in a lot of different locations. In your upper, lower part of your back, usually because the kidney stone is on one side, you're going to feel it either on the right side or the left side, and it can shoot on the side or right into your groin or in the lower abdomen. It can feel like the pain is a little bit higher up, like it could be a gallstone, but it's actually a kidney stone, and it can make you very nauseous and want to vomit. Now, the interesting thing about a kidney stone is that there's not any pain receptors in the kidney itself. There's a lot of pain receptors in the ureter, the little tube that comes out of your kidney, which has a diameter about four millimeters, okay? And my kidney stone was 10 millimeters, okay? So you were, we're trying to take a rock and push it through a tube that doesn't fit. And not only a rock, but a rock that has jagged, sharp edges. And the reason I know that is because about a month before this episode, I was jogging. And when I got back to the house, I had a urinate and I was peeing blood. And what was happening is this rock that had sharp edges was, was kind of going up and down in my kidney, completely tearing up the inside of my kidney. Now you would think that would motivate someone to change their ways or do something or go get it checked out. But at that time, my awareness was so low, I didn't do anything about it. I thought maybe it'll just go away. Now, there's nothing more than insane pain from a kidney stone that will wake you up and force you to do something about it. So when we arrived to the hospital, there were, of course, there was a line at the hospital and it was three o'clock in the morning. And I get in there and I'm just like, give me some drugs now. So they gave me morphine. I felt some relief. And I started to kind of massage my abdominal area. And that seemed to give me a lot of relief. I think what happened at the time is I kind of pushed the stone back up into the kidney and gave me some temporary relief for at least for a couple of days. So after a couple of days, um, the pain came back again, this time even worse. So I think at that time, I think I just took some Tylenol and got rid of the pain, but then I scheduled an appointment with the kidney doctor and they did an ultrasound and a CAT scan and found I had this kidney stone that was about 10 millimeters and it was lodged right at the beginning of the, this little tube called the ureter. And the problem was it wasn't able to get through this tiny little tube, but it was stopping the urine flow. And that flow of urine just backed up in the kidney and caused swelling of the kidney and created a lot of pain from the pressure. Now, what's interesting about this little ureter that only has the diameter of like four millimeters is sometimes people can pass very large stones, even to the point where they're 20 millimeters. And they don't know why this is, but this ureter has a peristalsis function. It uh, has contractile tissue. So it's very similar to the colon where you have these, this wave of contraction and relaxation to help push things through. But unfortunately with my kidney stone, it wasn't going through anywhere. It just created constant pain. So 
what I decided to do is do lipotripsy, which they put this sound wave through you and they, they explode the stone with a sound wave and then you're peeing sand for a while. So I went through the procedure and then started to really learn about how to prevent a kidney stone. And I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna recommend based on firsthand information. The most common type of kidney stone is a calcium oxalate stone. The combination of calcium and these things called oxalates. Now, your body makes oxalates and oxalates also come from food. Apparently, one of the main causes of a kidney stone is the body's inability to get rid of oxalates. And the other thing you need to know is that 80% of the oxalates in your body are actually made by your body. Only 20% comes from the diet, but you still want to avoid foods high in oxalates like tea. Now, part of the US um, has this belt around it, the lower states. They call it the kidney stone belt because there's a higher incidence of kidney stones and they correlated that from drinking too much sweet tea. So not only does the tea have oxalates, but the sugar in it can also aggravate and increase the risk of getting kidney stones as well. Um, spinach is very high. Almonds and almond flour is very high. As in a lot of the almond keto bombs that a lot of people are consuming, kiwi has a good amount of uh, oxalates, chocolate, soy, potato, beans, and I have another video specifically on oxalates that I'll, I'll put down below. Now, there's a, quite a few theories on why people develop kidney stones. Um, some people will say um, you're consuming too much protein. There's some mixed reviews on that. Some people say it's from consuming too much vitamin C, but there's also conflicting information on that, especially if you're consuming vitamin C naturally from food. Uh, but apparently ascorbic acid made synthetically, which is the part of the vitamin C complex, turns into oxalates. So I'm sure that doesn't help. Then you have um, this thought that you're consuming too much calcium. But the thing is, if there's enough calcium in the diet, it won't dump into the kidney. They found that if you're deficient in calcium, you can have higher amounts of calcium in your kidney. So again, there's mixed reviews on that. And then there's this idea that if you're consuming a high salt diet, that that causes kidney stones but there's also conflicting information on that as well. And then there's also data that high fructose corn syrup can increase your risk of getting kidney stones. And there's a lot of data on that. And that seems to be a high um, correlation factor. And then there's data on citrates. Apparently, if you're prone to kidney stones, you have low citrates. And so citrate helps to prevent the binding of calcium to oxalates. And if you consume like lemon juice that's high in citrates, you can help to lessen the risk factor. And there's been quite a few reports on people consuming like a, a cup of lemon juice every single day to help dissolve their kidney stones and apparently with some good results. But what I wanna to discuss today is the most important things you should do to prevent kidney stones if you're prone to kidney stones. So what you need to understand is that a kidney stone will develop uh, from having urine being in a concentrated form. They call it a super saturated situation where there's just too much concentrated urine and this concentrated combination of calcium and oxalates start to develop these crystals. So based on that data, the most important thing to do out of anything would be to drink enough fluids. If you were to drink two and a half liters of fluid every single day, you would absolutely and positively prevent kidney stones from forming because you couldn't form a kidney stone because the urine is just too diluted. So sometimes when you tell people to drink two and a half liters, they kind of scratch their head like, how much water is that? Well, that is a little more than 10 cups. It's 10.5 cups and one cup is eight ounces. So it's about 84.5 ounces. So I want to show you what eight ounces looks like, okay? Right here. This is what eight ounces. You'd have to do 10 and a half of these. Okay. Let me just give you another example. Here's a smaller cup. Just so you can see what it looks like. That's eight ounces. So 10 and a half of these per day. Now, if you put some lemon juice in it, that would be a very good idea. Now, what about if you drink something like this? How many of these would you have to drink per day to be two and a half liters? 
you'd have to drink 3.3 of these. So a little more than three of these per day. All right, that's number one. Number two, add the lemon to the water. The more, the better. At least one tablespoon a day, but try to do more if you're prone to kidney stones. I always like to add some apple cider vinegar as well. I might add a teaspoon to the lemon and maybe sometimes even a drop of stevia and it makes it a nice sweet drink. All right, the next thing you wanna do is start avoiding the high oxalate foods. I have a good video that explains that in detail. I put the link down below so you can watch it after you're done. All right, number four. Now you're not gonna find this anywhere, but I highly recommend you do this if you're prone to kidney stones or if you have a kidney stone and you're trying to pass a kidney stone through this long little tube called a ureter. Massage on your abdomen. You just take your fingers and you start to massage the front part of your abdomen, right where the kidney would be on both sides. Now, what is that gonna do? Well, if you have a small stone that just needs a little bit of help to push it through, and you're not anywhere near a hospital where you can get some relief, if you start massaging that part, you may just push the stone right into the bladder. And the reason I'm telling you this, because I've had a handful of people who have done that, and it's the only thing that gave them relief. So simply just massage wherever it hurts, and then also massage on the opposite area where it hurts, so you can actually get both kidneys. All right, number five, it's been proven that when you're on a high carb diet, your risk for kidney stones goes up. So you wanna be on a low carb diet because carbohydrates and high sugar in the blood increase calcium in the kidney. Not to mention all the soda people drink with high fructose corn syrup really increases the risk of getting a kidney stone. All right, and some really key nutrients to help prevent kidney stones is vitamin D, magnesium, and potassium. The next most important video to watch on kidney stones is right here. Check it out.